I've sold a lot of them. None, none of my customers have had the problem. Today, the real and hidden dangers of e-cigarettes. You just saw some footage from our undercover investigation. We're going to show you that shocking video a little later in this show. But I want you to understand why e-cigarettes are exploding in the first place. And to do that, we have to understand how they work. So let me show you. First of all, this is an e-cigarette. Now, it's got several components. There's a liquid nicotine cartridge, right, over here. There's the cartridge, right? It's got nicotine in there. There's an atomizer. And the reason it's there is because this lithium battery is going to supercharge it, power the device, which heats up the device with this atomizer, and it goes up to about 600 degrees, turning the liquid into a vapor. Now, the controversy you've heard before is about that vapor. If it could be dangerous for smokers or even for people who are walking by it because you're breathing it out at them. The answer, frankly, is we don't know yet because the contents of that liquid haven't been regulated. But the new controversy has to do with the sheer strength of the lithium battery itself because when it's made poorly, these batteries can short out. They can cause a surge of heat that creates a reaction allowing a flammable electrolyte inside that battery to spontaneously combust and explode. That's why these batteries have been called mini bombs in your pocket. And this is the result. These photos that you're about to look at were taken and used as evidence. Imagine yourself with one of these in your mouth or in your pocket or, frankly, with the loved one. So joining me now is core team expert, Dr. Jen Cottle. She's reported on e-cigarettes, and her patients have often asked her, as they're asking doctors all over the country, if they are safe. So these lithium batteries are really common, right? There are all kinds of these. There are foams, they're in fitness trackers. But how is this happening in e-cigarettes? Well, that's a great question. Actually, the U.S. Fire Administrator reports that about 80% of e-cigarette explosions actually happen when the device is actually charging. And they can happen at other times, too, but that's a big element. And I reviewed some different case reports of explosions, and there are some common elements throughout them. Um, one is if there's an incorrect or non-approved charger that's used to charge the e-cigarette, that can cause problems or if the device is actually overcharged, which can actually happen. Um, another thing is if the battery is not approved or not the correct battery for the e-cigarette, or if someone's using replacement parts that, again, are not intended for that particular model of e-cigarette, all of those things can actually cause problems and, and lead to explosions. Now, uh, some people actually reported, too, that keeping the batteries in their pockets with loose change or keys or metal has caused them problems. But it's not always the user that's the problem. Many of these devices simply are not made well. The battery is not insulated the device is not insulated and so really we're seeing a, a good amount of problems actually yeah I I'll tell you something I just learned that in young people more people vape than smoke cigarettes this has become a massive issue through the country and I'm concerned that we've missed the boat completely because it is the wild, wild west. When you're telling me loose change or keys in my pocket with an e-cigarette could lead to exploding it in my pocket for reasons that I don't control, I get real nervous. So we wanted to see how severe these injuries are. And Absolutely. You're going to show this to us. Now, yeah. I'm going to tell you something. I, I want to warn you all. These are graphic. So you may want to turn away. I want to make it graphic because I want to call attention to this issue. I want you fully informed about the level of severity that we're talking about. So take us through these cases. Right. So, yeah, you're going to see a lot of graphic images. This is actually one, one from the UCH Burn Center that's actually seen 13 e-cigarette burn cases in just a year. Um, this is a patient, actually, that came in. You can see there's second and third degree burns. Uh, the patient actually required skin grafting. That's how bad the burns were. This is a patient. This is actually a, a picture from Mass uh, General uh, Burn Surgery Center. Um, this is the patient when they presented to the hospital. You can see this burn over here. This is the picture, what they look like five days post-operatively. They actually required uh, skin grafts and skin excisions. And there's a big difference. Yeah, let me just point something out to everybody. This is the diameter of the calf. Same, same person, by the way. Right. You know, that would probably go to about here. All this stuff is swelling. Right. Imagine that happening on your body. Right. And what if you're using the device and it explodes? Yeah, this is, this is very scary and, and very sad. This is actually a 26-year-old young woman. She presented to UC Davis. This is how she looked when she presented to the hospital. Um, this is actually after she had surgery. Now, you, what you can see here is second-degree burns around the mouth. You can actually also see, if you can look closely, that she literally had a tooth that was blown out of her mouth. Yeah. So these are big issues. Eight million people say they're using e-cigarettes, and these explosions are happening more and more. So take a look. This is Mara. She's out on a regular shopping trip at her local mall. All of a sudden, her handbag explodes. She has no idea what's going on. 
and they start to deal with the repercussions. So this is just a few months ago, it's still fresh. Yes, very fresh. So what was going through your mind when you saw your whole bag go up in flames? Can I be honest with you? Um, the first thing I heard was an explosion with it being 9-11. Honestly, I thought it was like a mall attack. It was 9-11 when this yes, happened? Yes, it was a Sunday, 9-11, mall was packed explosion the video really shows no justice i mean the flames were to the ceiling the the bag exploded um i was covered from head to foot in soot um i inhaled lithium i was coughing out uh soot i was um i couldn't see i couldn't you know so yeah i was just pure fright and um confusion why'd you run back to the bag i that that is one of the biggest questions everyone asks me. And honestly, once I put two and two together that it came from my bag, um, everyone from the store jetted. So I felt like it was my due diligence. So since I gathered and realized that it came from my bag to figure out what it was. Yeah. So I'm going to show this video to you if you don't mind. Just watch it back again, right? So yeah, watch it. It goes up in flames. Watch see how close your hands are to it, right? The yes. purse actually acted like a shield. Yes. It spared you from burns, Oh from the injuries God. we just talked about earlier. It did. All right. When you realized it was your e-cigarette. Yeah. What was the emotion you felt? Anger? anger, pure anger, rage. Because I was never informed when I went to these shops and there was never warning labels on any of these e-cigarettes and I never heard and I was never informed of these things exploding. So I was mad. So this is your actual purse? Yes. Can I show it to everybody? Yeah, of course. So first of all, you, you just look on the outside you can see this thing is really blown apart i mean like shrapnel smacked it and you know these are not small little defects here uh this this hole here i mean that could be your cheek oh yeah right oh, and yeah. not so easy to discard <laughs> if it's your cheek i mean these are devastating got, injuries and if i look on the inside I mean, by the way you know you got folks at home can't smell this but maybe in the audience you can i mean this is uh it's it's full of soot and it still smells it's it's it's, it's blown the bits and i can only imagine if your daughter had her hand in here, yeah. or if you're driving around because of explosion in your car, you're not going to stick around. You'll, you know, you can cause multiple accidents of that course. way. Of course, of course, it could have been tragic. It could have been way worse. So, so let me, if I can, I bring an expert in this area. And by the way, I'm happy you're okay because you. so uh, this is the absolute best Thank outcome it could have been. So, Greg Bentley is a lawyer representing the more than 80 other victims of e-cigarette explosions that we know of in his practice. You just had a $1.9 million verdict against in one of these cases. So are manufacturers feeling the heat? Well, they should be, but uh, frankly, not enough. So the story that we just heard, I'm hearing these stories all across the country. The number of explosions keep increasing. We're hearing about them just about every single day. Horrific injuries to the face, to burns all over the legs. And unfortunately, most of these defective products are manufactured in China and it's next to impossible to get jurisdiction against the Chinese manufacturer and so they can make these defective products really without any legal liability or accountability for the harm that it causes. I mean, you're a lawyer, you're supposed to take rules we make in this country and apply them and you're, what I'm hearing from you is you really can't effectively enough. So who's going to own this problem in America? Yeah, so what happens here is, and I think consumers need to be aware of this as well, as, as, as well as retailers and wholesalers. Everybody in the supply chain, if you put a product on the market and it's defective, whether or not you're the manufacturer, the distributor, the wholesaler, or the retailer, if that product's defective, you're gonna be responsible for the harm. And so the retail stores that are selling these products, they better do their homework and make sure that the batteries are safe. And the big problem here, Dr. Oz, is that it's completely unregulated. There's no requirement that the battery or component parts should be tested for safety. There's no, there's no requirement that there's certain standards put in place for safety. And actually, it's the big tobacco companies now that are jumping into this industry that are fighting regulation. They do not want the product tested. It's shocking to me. They're putting something out on the market that's causing horrific harms and injuries, yet they're opposing regulation that would allow for testing to make sure the products are safe. I gotta say, guys, I think it's gonna kill the whole field. And I'm not necessarily against e-cigarettes when used appropriately, but if you have them blowing up in people's faces, it's not gonna exist as a tool anymore. So it's increasingly frustrating to me that folks who could make these things safer aren't willing to do it, at least spread the wisdom about how to prevent catastrophes from happening. I mean, it's immoral. 
So I mean, where's the FDA in this, Jen? Yeah, well, I mean, these are all important and accurate points. The FDA actually is stepping in for all of these reasons. Uh, last summer, there were new regulations that were announced, and the idea is that new devices would need to be evaluated for their ingredients, their health risks, also the product design, which includes things like the battery, the wattage, the voltage of the battery, the battery type, etc. So that's really important. Um, for devices that are already on the market now, that are already existing, they would have about two years to submit a product registration to be evaluated for these safety issues that we're talking so about. about. My, well, two years is a lot of blown off faces and noses and lips and kids' hands. I mean, I look at this bag, I, mean, I don't understand what the issue is here. If I, if I was taking you know, explosives and throwing them away, I wouldn't get two years to fix the problem. Well, you know, even more than that, and, and you bring up a very good point, even more than that, um, legislation right now, as Greg mentioned, um, it's sort of in legislative review. Um, it, you know, there's the, the process for, for putting these regulations in place have actually been slowed down a bit. So we still have a By lot of By lobbyists who are working for Big Tobacco and others? Is that great, Greg? Yes, yeah, so the fight right now is being taken by Big Tobacco. And it's been estimated that the e-cig industry is going to equal or surpass tobacco sales in about 10 years. And so oh Big my. Tobacco is fully in in this game. And Big Tobacco got the lobbyists together to enact a regulation that is trying to delay the regulation and enforcement of testing of these products. It's all being fought by Big Tobacco right now. All right, so in a, in a minute, I hope you guys are all worked up about this, because you should be. All right. We're going to tell you what you at home can do and here in the audience to apply pressure on Washington to regulate these products. But first, Myra, let me just ask you the open question. As a mom who, who could have had dangerous injury to limb and life, what are you doing differently? What decision have you made personally with e-cigarettes? I throw my vape out and I have no I'm, I'm no longer vaping. So I, I want the e-cigarette industry to hear this. The, Mary, you're representing a lot of Americans yes, right now. Yes, of course. There's no way these things yeah. are going to be able to be used meaningfully if people like you and many millions watching right now say, heck, I'm not going to take that chance. You know, a regular cigarette doesn't blow up in my face, and I know that's dangerous. This is even worse. Correct. And it should be the opposite. So Dr. Carl is going to take this e-cigarette investigation to the next level. We are sending her undercover. I'm about to do something that I never thought in medical school I'd do. I'm going undercover to ask questions about the safety of cigarettes. E-cigarettes, that is. First, I was rigged with a hidden camera. And then it was time to enter a vape shop in New York City. I saw some things about like them exploding. Like, yeah. does well, that happen? No. It, it does People that it exploded on yeah. must have tried to put something in there, tried to get high off of, or they're just dumb to put something else. Like what? Like a different I mean, battery? Someone, or? Put, someone put, I think, uh, petroleum or uh, instead of juice. Oh. That's ridiculous. But well, you never had any problems with yours? Or I've never that. had any problems. So they told me not to worry about e-cigarettes exploding, as problem. did the next shop. We didn't have any issues. We haven't had any issues. No. Okay. Yeah. And the third was no different than the first two. Do you have to be careful about what you keep it with? Like, no. can you put it in your pocket? You can put it with your keys, like throw it in your bag. You're good with all of that? Nothing like that. Nothing like that. And finally, at the last door, two salespeople conceded there could be problems. Okay, have you guys ever had problems with your own devices? Like, when I mean, you're vaping? Yeah, like in the beginning, because, like, you know, I didn't know any better. No, I, that's I, I, I've had stuff automatically fire in my pocket. Like, you know, regular batteries, because the metal touches both sides, the battery is going to think that it's turning on. And about 10 minutes later, you're going to have to take a firework show. Oh, my goodness. I mean, this, the whole show is shocking to me. The explosions we're seeing. Yeah, it, it was actually really surprising. I, it, and as I mentioned in the um, in the shoot there, I was kind of surprised that there wasn't more talk about the potential for these devices to explode. And the other thing I, I realized after the, the products were described, and we have some here, is I actually didn't think that they were that necessarily easy to use. They're a little bit complicated, in my opinion. Um, there are some. Um, some of these devices come with instructions, which is a really great thing. Yeah. Um, but the instructions talk a little bit about being careful around children and how to fill the liquid in the device. But I don't think that this is enough. I don't think that this is enough instruction really to give someone a good full picture about what the dangers are and really how to safely use yeah, these devices. They're definitely not addressing some of the things we've been talking about today. Right. I mean, these are all, you know, I guess, don't play around with kids. Right. You don't use less than 18, although the, who knows if you can ever enforce these. But the really life-threatening element of the short term, something that we've been talking about today, not have been broached. Right. So, so Greg, from what you've seen, do you think these products are adequately labeled? Do they, do they tell us that, what the dangers truly are? No, they're completely failing to give proper warning. In fact, any type of warning. And in fact, the FDA, in trying to get warning, it's being pushed back to where the industry, if they're going to have to do it, 
won't have to put the warning labels on there until 2018. So you're going to have thousands of people that are going to have explosions in their face, on their legs, without any warning or knowing. And, you know, frankly, with the warning labels, it's shocking that they don't do it. But what are they going to say? Warning, could explode in your face. Or warning, it could cause serious burns to your legs and back and thighs. No one would buy the product. So they're pushing back, not giving the proper warning. And consumers just simply don't know. Yeah, you don't know. That's actually in a nut. Right. That's, Th that's the problem. That's the problem. That's the problem. I mean, if you could actually avoid these things. Right. But you're right. Who's going to put a warning label saying it could blow your head off? Right. You know, yeah. Be careful. Yeah. So we reached out to the Smoke Free Alternative Trade Association asking about this issue. They did not respond to any of our requests. So I'm going to step in with some warnings because I know some of you are going to keep using e-cigarettes no matter what. And if you want to reduce the risk of explosions, do these things. And we'll put this up on DrOz.com. Please share it with your friends who might be vaping. I know it's become huge in America. It is the future of the tobacco industry we just heard a little earlier. So, you know, for folks who are on this thing, uh, use a charger that the manufacturer recommends for your battery. Don't mix and match. Don't charge the battery for longer than recommended. And these things are important, these next ones. Don't carry extra batteries in your pocket. You're carrying around detonators. Why bother? And don't keep loose change and coins and keys and devices that are loose around because they can short each other out. Now, I am shocked to see just how serious these e-cigarette explosions are, but the system doesn't have to be rigged against the consumer. We Guys, we all have a voice here. So here's what you can do. I want you to send a message to Washington. Your congressmen, your senators, they actually listen. They really do. Especially if they get a lot of letters from our viewers, it works. So I'm putting a letter on DrOz.com that you can sign and send to lawmakers in your community telling them that you want the FDA and the lawmakers to make sure these products are appropriately labeled and ideally safe. These things have the potential to be safer than cigarettes. We're throwing away a huge opportunity to make America a healthier place. We should get in the way of that bad stuff and make change happen. We'll be right back.